All right, George, uh, if or when you could get fans in the stand, what would that mean for the psyche of you or your team? Well, I, I think all professional athletes, uh, professional organizations, coaches, players, all the way through want the fans in the building. And uh, that that's, that's the juice. That's the, uh, you know, it, that's what makes it, a game quite honestly that that's what gives it excitement so um you know players are entertainers they want to play in front of someone and uh i'm not sure that's in our near future uh judging what's going on in our world so we can't be concerned about that we need to generate uh playing the right way and playing with the right amount of energy each and every game but you you haven't heard anything one way or the other than that they might be added perhaps oh no that, okay. that is, I'm not involved. Listen, we have, forget about hockey, forget about sports. There's other things going on. I, I don't even ask the questions about that. I think there are many more important things to do in our world to get people straightened out and safe than uh, fans coming in the building and us worrying about it. Thanks. You bet. Okay, next, we'll go to Aaron Portsline. Go ahead, Aaron. Thanks, Glenn. Good morning, John. Uh, you see, it's one of two ways when the team is sort of struggling to find their their jive, if you will. What's your issue? Do these guys need to go harder? Do they need to just relax, as has been the case in the past? Or do you think is a pathway to more success? Yeah, I, I, I mean, it's it's right on through our team to start the first three or four games here. It, uh, we just need to have them play through it. We, we need some good things to happen for us. And uh, I mean, I'm not... I'm not questioning uh, them trying. Uh, I, I do. I do think, and it's going to be like this all year long. I think it's a different type of uh, feel on the ice and a, and a different type of energy, as, as Clay just alluded to. Those are the things that we have to fight through, and um, and hopefully they. I'm going to put them out in the ice. I got to get you know. It's not just one particular guy. This is a group of men that are, that you know we're struggling moving the puck. So we just got to keep on playing. Uh, get some practice time when we can get it uh, uh, and get some puck touches and just try to feel better about ourselves. How deflating was, was, was the, the overtime to be over so quickly? I know yeah, you sent Tony Atkins and Jones out as an opportunity, opportunity to find something and get some confidence some going there. there. With those guys, and that have it quickly. Yeah, that, that, you know, I, I, I had a number of different things going on in my mind as far as who's going to start it. Do I put Jens out there uh, to win a face-off so we have full control and all that stuff? But I, you know, Cam and and uh, and Max have, have struggled, and and quite honestly, Z and and uh, uh, Jonesy have struggled uh, offensively. So I wanted to try, especially Max. I wanted to give him a start in the OT, and it absolutely it goes the other way, and it's a you know turnover and a two-on-one and. And it was a really tough night for Elvis and where he got, I think, six or seven scoring chances total. He didn't get much work at all. But all three goals are deflections or just crazy stuff. Uh, so I'm sure it didn't help him either. So but we got to just get ready for our next one, as I said, after the game. Thanks. Okay. We'll go to Brian Hedger. Go ahead, Brian. Hey, John, who's your starting goal tonight? Do you have any Corpy. other changes? Do you have any no other changes? No other changes. Corpy's in goal. Okay. Um, you know, getting back to what we were just talking about there with the, uh, the bounce was on the mess. You have a game like that. I know you weren't thrilled with the way you guys played overall. But, I mean, when something like that happens, you, is it easier to just kind of write it off the next one? The final bounce just didn't get, go your way? Yeah, I mean, I, listen, I don't know how you guys watched it, but it was tough for me to watch by both teams. I mean, I, think, I thought both teams were just brutal with the puck. And uh, and I'm, I'm, I'm maybe I shouldn't speak for Detroit and evaluating them, but I, it was just a lousy game. And uh, I'm glad we got a point, but I wanted the game over. And, and I haven't looked at one clip of that, and I won't. Uh, we just get ready for our next game against Tampa. You, we'll learn nothing from that game at all. Yeah. Um, with Boone Jenner, I mean, he's got a couple of goals already in four games. You know, the last few years he's had struggles scoring goals. Is it good to just see, you know, him be able to put that back on that? And it sounds like you had a pretty good camp as well. 
Yeah, you know, I, I think Jens and, and Tex are two very important guys. Not that they just have, you know, Tex has three goals now. It's not so much the points, but I think it's going to be a year uh, of how do you find energy you know, when you play these games? And uh, I, I, those are two energy guys for us. I'm trying to keep them together. Uh, they'll play together again tonight. Uh, no, no, they won't. They will not play together tonight. Uh, but I, when, I, when I've had them together and I put them on the ice, I think it helps us uh, just generate, just generate some energy. It, 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 nothing may happen on the ice, but at least there'll be some energy there. And I do think that's why it's, it's kind of followed them a little bit. And they've had a couple of points along the way is because they play that hard. And I think they're two very important guys, uh, especially this year in where I think as the season keeps on going, and I, I've already seen it, I've watched other games, the lack of energy in some of these games. Thank you. Next, we'll go to uh, Dave Metzl. Go ahead, Dave. Thanks, Glenn. Hi, John. Um, you mentioned a little bit <coughs> practice time and is it for everybody, really. How does that throw an extra wrinkle for you, for you uh, in terms of how to get these guys going? Where you might ordinarily have a chance to work out of the practice or whatever. You just, you just don't just because of the condensed schedule. Yeah, I, I think that's when it's going to come into puck touches at pregame skates. Uh, pregame, I, I said this to you earlier that. I really don't like having them on the ice in the pregame, uh, uh, the morning of the game, but I think that may have to happen more often this year uh, to balance. Do we bring them in and have them touch the puck because we banged it up the night before and just wear them out uh, because just the way the schedule is set up? Or do we have to use those morning skates to get them out there for 10 or 15 minutes? And that's where I think there's going to be a change. And I, I can't forecast when that's going to happen. I, I'm always just looking at what our team is. But, you know, I'll give you a, for example, Dave. We, Our games are 2 o'clock uh, on Saturday. Uh, do I do I have a full practice tomorrow? Or do I bring them in and just give them an option to move the blood in the weight room and ride the bike? And, uh, and some guys can go option on the ice. Or do I bring everybody in just to touch the puck for a few minutes? Those are things I'm going to have to make a decision after tonight's game. Um, you know, because it's a quick turnaround. Two o'clock, and we've played a lot of hockey up to this, and uh, so yeah, those those are the things that we we have to talk about each and every day as far as where our club is. And does the nature of that morning skate change from just getting a, a puck touch or two to doing some actual X's and O's type work? And that could happen also, it, it, depending on how our team is playing, and if we are having some struggles. Uh, uh, do we need to touch upon in a pregame skate some D-zone coverage? Just a few minutes of D-zone coverage to get things sorted out as far as our reads. Those are all things uh, uh, that, that, that we're going to have to keep an open mind about uh, as we're trying to get them rest. And I do. I do think it's a schedule of trying to find your team rest. Uh, and, and that's when the, the, you know, what is the workload of that pregame skate, or at least the thinking in that pregame skate. Uh, uh, in, in taxing him there. And my final question is on Liam Foody. I short sample size. I realize, but he seemed uh, pretty, uh, pretty obvious, pretty apparent. His game is everything. I wonder what his progression has been like early on. Yeah, he, he's moving along. I, I'd still like to see him uh, uh, test people with his speed, with the puck. I, I think he's pulled up sometimes where I think he could have taken that player on and try to beat him. Uh, but those are all things he's going to sort out in, 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 in being such a young guy with us here. But, uh, you know, I, I, I thought him, him, Tex, and Bjorki had, a, had a, although they score a goal, but I, I thought they had some good shifts together. They'll probably play together again tonight. Uh, so, yeah, he, he is, I mean, it's speed. Him and Robbie bring some pretty good speed to us. And I, I thought Robbie was probably, uh, could have been our most consistent player the last game. Um, you know, that's really good news. But also, then I'm saying, well, that can't happen regularly. And it's not not to uh, disrespect Robbie. We need other guys to be our best players also, in meaning our top guys. Thanks, George. Next, we'll go to Mark Scheid. Go ahead, Mark. Thanks, Glenn. Hi, John. Um, when you have players struggling with confidence, especially with the puck, do you kind of leave it to them to figure that out? Or do you have a role in trying to restore their confidence? Well, I, I just got to, I've got to be really careful on how I coach, especially so early in, uh, do I just stop playing them? Do I not put them in the situations because you're frustrated with them and try someone else? 
Um, those are the those are the decisions I have to make. Uh, but I keep on putting putting them out in the ice and and and, and trying to let wet, let them work through it. I'm doing that with a number of people. I mean, we we've got them all: uh, Jonesy, Z, Dubois, Cam, Nick. Uh, I mean, go, go right down the the. They're, they're all fighting it a bit. And uh, again, it's easy it's easy to say, oh, "The hell with you! I'm going to go with someone else." But we have a whole bunch of them, so. I, I'm in the ill care to just keep on trying to play him and uh, and see if we get some sort of flow into our offense and gain some confidence. It's still really early, but there's always that that thing in the back of your head. But we we don't have the 82 games either, so the, the, it's a it's a total different way coaches have to think in this 56 game schedule. Okay, next we'll go to Clay Hall. Go ahead, Clay. Clay's gone. Yeah, he's gone. Okay, next we'll go to Aaron Portsline. Go ahead, Aaron. Hey, John, we all tend to evaluate uh, perhaps on fairly early, just by points, points alone. alone. So Texas is there, there, the production this year. How different, How different is he for you, for you from you this time, time last, last season? Do you see a noticeable change in his game? I don't see a change. I, I see him playing games. I mean, he just didn't play. I mean, he was so banged up. And uh, he's not going to change uh, – uh, what he is. He is just, he, he is energy. It's all walled up in there. I do think as he continues to play, there are going to be certain times and certain situations in a game that he may have to slow himself down a little bit. Like he, he catches people off guard when he moves the puck because he moves it so hard all the time, whether it be 10 feet or 30 feet. And I think he's going to find that uh, type of feel. Uh, but I'd rather have a guy like him uh, and trying to slow him down at certain times uh, than have certain other people uh, uh, that you have to try to ramp up to get him to play with energy. So t Tex, Tex is a guy that uh, uh, he's going to find his way in, in having some touch certain times with the puck uh, uh, as, he, as he gets more and more experience in situations. Speaking specifically about his, his uh, passing, I remember earlier that season, he did this as well, where some of his passes were almost wrist shot. Yes. Uh, <laughs> and at first, I'm wondering, is, is he ahead of the pace and, and his teammates aren't quite thinking as quickly as he is? Or is that just too much on the puck for anybody? Where where do you come in on that? No, he's just he's just moving the puck hard every time. Yeah. And uh, uh, like Lars, Lars has leaned over to me a couple of times and mentioned, he says he must have been coached that you got to move that puck hard, move that puck. It must have been drilled into his head. Yeah, yeah. Uh, he throws a pass uh, early this year. It wasn't even on his tape. It was in Jonesy skates. It was a bomb. I mean, it was a hard pass. It was only from about 15, 20 feet. Right. And, but he'll figure that out. I, I, I love the way he plays. And he's going to figure that out through experience. And as I said, I'd rather have it that way where it has to be toned down at certain times than to always try and to, to get a guy to play hard. Uh, He'll figure that out. He's a smart enough guy. He's very coachable. Uh, and I think he, I, I think him and Jens are very important this year because of just the way they are with their energy. As I said, that I think there's certain nights that we're going to have to find our, we, well, every night, we're going to have to find our own energy. It's not going to come from a building. Yeah. Let me question that a little bit. Does he have to figure that out? Or or do other guys have to get up speed to play with that? Do you know what I'm saying? Well, it depends on who you're talking about as far as that other player. There's, there's a few guys that uh, have to get up with speed. There's a few guys that are, are right there, and Tex has to figure out how to mesh with them. So it's a little bit of both. Gotcha. Thank you.